Saturday Social, brought to you by EA Sports FC with PlayStation 5. Uh, welcome back to Saturday Social. It is, of course, the Carabao Cup final live on Sky Sports this weekend, Joe. And it is the fixture that separates our two guests. Chelsea supporting Sam, of course. Liverpool supporting Lawrence. So we thought we'd get them head-to-head -head in a classic play about. They've already gone head-to-head -head in ball knowledge and Loz one up Sam. I think he's in Sam's mm. head a little bit. Yeah, he's, I mean... He's a little bit. The, for, the format <laughs> should bit. really get this bit spicy, yeah. we're hoping. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to throw up two names of either players or managers mm. related to Chelsea and Liverpool. You're going to tell us who you would rather have. Easy. Yeah. Very Easy. simple. Understood. On the whiteboard, it's very, very simple. OK, first up in our player battle, all Chelsea versus Liverpool, this. It is Czech or Alisson. Also, if you could write them quite big so that we can see on camera, that would help us out. Yeah, let's not... No let's small writing. Small writing. Small writing. tend to be very guilty of that. I can't remember if it's double L or double S, Ooh. which I should. Show each other. Three, two, one, reveal. Easy. I don't think you honestly believe that, though. That, I think that that's just you being a prisoner of the moment and forgetting who a Czech is. A prisoner of the moment? I'm a prisoner wow. of the moment. Wow. Wow. What a I, I'm surprised that came out of me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it might be the, the ball. But, um, I think Czech, you can't look past what he'd done in the league, the, the Champions League final as well, the most clean sheets. Like He's the best um, goalkeeper that has ever played in, in the Premier League. He is one of the best goalkeepers to ever play in the Premier League. But the reason that Alisson is above Czech, in my humble opinion, is Alisson enables the way that Liverpool play, whereas Petr Cech had people sitting extremely deep in front of him for a quite a long time. time. It's a different it, No, time. you're right, it was a different time, but that also enables that. This is probably, second to Peter Schmeichel, the second best Premier League goalkeeper of all, of all time. time. Yeah, he's Alisson. defining he's oh. defining of the modern position. He allows Liverpool to play the way they play. Petr Cech never did that in any of the sides that he was in. Oh, I, oh. Honest, I honestly, like, I'm actually disgusted at what you just said there. <laughs> That's OK. Like, I, I kind of said it to trigger you. No, because <laughs> you, you can't look past what Peter Cech has done. No, I can. What, watch. No, no, you, <laughs> you, you, like, if we're actually going to be honest here, we've got to be honest. Like, I, in this conversation... It's guys, heated conversation, to, I'd appreciate it to, if you would We be. have to have some sincerity here, and you can't tell me <laughs> what Alisson has done for Liverpool is anything in comparison to what Peter Cech done for Chelsea and for goalkeepers in general. If you're talking about goalkeepers' <laughs> big moments, like, the amount of clean Sheets. Yes, you're talking about the defences that are in front of them, but you're talking about a defence with Van, Van Dijk, one of the best right-backs, one of the best left-backs as well. Van Dijk plays as a midfielder, that. basically, in this nah, man, side. Nah, Let's also have it right here. Uh, in terms of uh, save percentage, so stopping the most number of goals, mm -hmm. this guy has the highest percentage of stopping the most expected goals in any of the seasons he's ever he appeared. did keep 24 a... clean sheets in that did one did keep 24 season, clean 20 sheets. 24 clean That's sheets. That's right, but how negative was that side? How defensive was the football? We're talking about wide-open football here in a Liverpool team that basically leave him open at the back. This guy Ooh. saves Klopp's blushes time after time and we're able to play this football because of Alisson. Not only that, but he's the best looking man. goalkeeper of all time. There is no overhyping Alisson. The wow. stats guys agree with me. When wow. I saw these matchups, I knew Alisson was the guy. You don't believe that and I know you don't believe that. You just got back a Liverpool goalkeeper. That... Peter Cech is clearly better than, than Alisson. Alisson, all... he might end his career maybe in that conversation, but he is not even This is only the right first now. debate of many. Yeah, should so... we move on to the... <laughs> <Should we move laughs> on Sorry, but we not just, do, do we just leave him that open-ended? Would mean, you guys judge this a little bit? Do we bit? judge it? I think we, we should judge, judge it, it yeah. yeah. I mean, I think there's, there's, look, XG prevention, Alisson is unbelievable, probably the best goal in the world right now. But obviously, I think Sam makes some valid points about uh, Petr Cech. 13 major trophies, by the way. What's the decision? Five major trophies. <laughs> More clean sheets for Cech as well. So, does but Cech edge it for long For me, isn't by the time he hangs up his gloves, it'll be better, but right now it's Cech. Yeah. I'd agree we can have, we can say the hypotheticals. We, hopefully, if he if he lives up to his expectations, let's go to the next one. Already there, unbelievable bro. guy. Let's, let's go to the next one because I think this one's going to cause quite a bit of debate mm. as well. I don't uh, think so. John Terry versus Virgil Van Dijk, oh, two top players. Yeah, spicy. This one should be okay. Three, two, one. Reveal. Okay. I, I like how we're initialising to... them both. Yeah. Let's yeah. come to Sam first. JT for you. Why? I think he's. I think he's now, because of the, the way modern centre-backs are being talked about and playing from the back and being able to switch with your right and left, people are forgetting that JT was one of those um, centre-backs that started that. He was one of the best ball-playing centre-backs of his era. If he played in, in, in Chelsea squad now, he would be the exact same. He was a leader, he won everything. And I feel like... VVD is, is quality, but I think it's again the same with Peter Cech and Alisson. Like, mm. if once he finishes his career, he might be better, but currently it has to be JT. 
Just the fact that we're discussing Virgil van Dijk in the same conversation with someone who is a legend for that club and is probably one of the best centre-backs it's ever mm. been um, is testament to what Virgil van Dijk is doing. He is the yardstick in the Premier League. He is the guy that people measure their centre-back by. John Terry was a very good defender in that time, but there were other good defenders in that time. Virgil van Dijk is head and shoulders above every other centre-back It says a lot about the other centre-backs, era. though. It's not about... Look, we can name ten other amazing centre-backs in this era. It's just that Virgil van Dijk is so good in this period. Not only that, but he's defining of that position, not only in the Premier League, but across Europe, nominated for a Ballon d'Or. He's dominated multiple different players in the Champions League, but also in the Premier League. And John Terry got dominated in the Champions League and the Premier League by multiple different players. He played against better strikers, played against... He, he was in an era where you're talking about some of the best strikers that to ever play the game. Yes, VVD is quality, but... It's just not. It's just not the same. I find it. I find it difficult because I think VVD in the in JT's era he would have been able to cope, but it would have been interesting seeing him up against Henri's, against the the Hasselbanks, you know, against the the Drogba's. It would have been different, bro. Did you say how? Yeah, Hasselbank was a bagsman. Hasselbank was that. an absolute bagsman. <laughs> but I think the the point being, Virgil Van Dijk would be able to go backwards. John Terry wouldn't be able to come forwards. Oh, is, wow. Do you I guys agree? Do you agree with that? It's not, it's not, no, it's not just the ball, I think this is very of that time. These are two of the best centre-backs. Yeah. I think if we're looking at... If we had a list of top centre-backs of all time in the Premier League, you probably you'd put JT slightly higher. That's I mean, only because the they scoring, deep. But he's the top-scoring defender in Premier League history. He's won, more, he's won more Premier League titles as captain than any other player. Top-scoring uh, defender in Premier League history. 15 major honours, longevity-wise. He was in Chelsea's team for pretty mm, much yeah. every season. Virgil van Dijk, yes. Conceded 15 goals in a season. Do you know what that is, bro? But do you act, do, are we actually like just trying to make that normal now? <laughs> to concede 15 goals in a season as a centre-back? I think at the average age of that squad was 25 or so, so he was still very young, and he did that. Like, VVD, I don't think he's got a stat where it even is comparable to that. There are multiple different stats where Virgil van Dijk is comparable to John Terry. 15 um, goals conceded in a Premier League season. He's not the only one doing that. That's part of a bigger system, which was basically to shut down games. You forget how many games ended 1-0 back then. Games don't end like that anymore. It's a different system that people are playing now. Players and managers are asked to do different things. Virgil van Dijk plays as part of a dynamic system. And not only that, but he's owning that system. John Terry was part of... And he had two people sitting in front of him as well. OK, let's move on to the next one, because you're not going to agree on the next yeah, one or the this... last one. So, will you agree on the next one? Um, two, two brilliant players, aren't they? Two yeah. very flair players. Uh, Eden Hazard or Mo Salah. This is a debate that goes on and on on social media. Yeah. You can only pick one. Hazard or Salah, who are you going with? Three, two, one, easy. reveal. Mo. You said easy, Loz. Yeah. But this is what I mean about the disrespect that is coming into the conversation. I'm not even going to disrespect Mo. I think he's a quality player, and in terms of the goals that he's scoring and, and what he's achieved at Liverpool, but if you're talking about a, a player that defined a position, a def defined an, even an error at Chelsea, you're talking about Eden Hazard. And I think when you're... You can talk about the stats, the goals and assists, yeah? He's had seasons where he, he got a lot of goals, he got a lot of assists as well. But as a footballer, you can make a lot of Mo Salah's goal-scoring goal wingers that do that. You can, you can see them being well, We've never seen a winger score that sure way. You make you're, a, you're, there's you're not gonna, another goal-scoring winger who's had the stats see, of Mo Salah. So you you're going to see, you're gonna see that. Saka's already en route to be getting double-digit goals and assists every season. He's already in that, convers he's so, already in that conversation. High double digits and double digits are two But we're not things. going to see a hazard that, that comes to the Premier League that can carry when your team is completely out of it. Hazard is that player that turns up. It doesn't matter about the system. It doesn't matter about how many people are marking him. You can man-mark Salah and you, he will struggle. You put three man on Hazard. When does that happen? I never see Salah get man-marked. I, I, think, I've seen, I think I've seen it happen with what? Salah uh, on rare occasions, but I've also seen it happen with Eden Hazard. I think the longevity of what Mo Salah's done, I think <coughs> that longevity era conversation is, is unfair because he started... You've in had that conversation for the last two people with yeah. JT against no, Van Dijk. Hazard, Hazard, no, but Hazard's longevity is there. If you talk about it... Where? Like, if you talk about how many games that they've actually played as professional footballers, it, Hazard has still played more games than Salah, and he's retired but, but already. Do you fact, the fact, there are only, there's only two years' age difference in it, and Eden Hazard's retired already, and Salah is one of the top forming players in the Premier League still. So, I mean, do you have to factor that in, the fact that Mo Salah, at his age, is still doing it at the very top level, and arguably he's one of the greatest... Well, Hazard started, well, not arguably, he's Hazard, one of the greatest... Hazard, Hazard started players. earlier. He started earlier. He was being kicked about from when he was in, in Ligue 1. He came to Chelsea very young, and he was still one of those frightening players that... Like, I, I respect Salah. But I just think Hazard, pure football. You seem very like listening to looking at your body language there on on uh, Sam. That you think this is a no-brainer. Do you? You are eager to jump in there? Oh, well, the reason the reason I would say it is people make space for Mo Salah, and you know when they make their top 11s or the starting 11s of all time. Yeah. 
Eden Hazard's in that conversation, of course, with all due respect to him. Mo Salah is that conversation. They don't really play the same position. So it's playing, a bit of an unfair... He's, he's playing now, though. He's, it's just the fact that he's playing... Like, I feel like Hazard's probably one of... He's becoming one of the most disrespected players. I, the, because the, of what, what he done at Chelsea is now looked at like it was normal. It wasn't normal, bro. No, I'm, in no way am I trying to normalise what Eden Hazard did. I think it was fantastic. But I also think we need to look at it in... in, in Comparison to each other, what Mo Salah's doing is just more prolific than what even goals, Hazard though. achieved. It's just the goals. It's not it's the goals. So you're saying Mo Salah's just goals, or you're saying it's just I, I'm goal saying I'm saying it's a, it's a I'm not saying it is the Messi and Ronaldo, but I'm saying it is in terms of like the actual footballer versus the stats. Like the stats, Ronaldo is going to pip Messi. Like in terms of the amount so you think of goals, he's on the eye. Better, better, to better, watch better footballer. He's a better Salah's footballer. got the stats, the goals and assists, and I'll take that. If that's what we want to talk, if we want to put on stats and who scored more, I'll change this to Salah. I'm but not... if we're talking about the better player, I'm putting Eden Hazard. I, I also think that there's an argument that Mo Salah's changed his game now to a, a whole different game. He's played in multiple different systems for Liverpool. He's tried different things for Liverpool. He's been a, a silent leader or one of those people that sets the example. I don't think Eden Hazard was ever really that. I think there's multiple different reasons why you put Mo Salah in, in this team or whatever selection it is you want to make mm. ahead of Eden Hazard. And I think the reason you two are silent is because you know I'm no, right. because if you put... Oh. Come on, I was going to say, I think you did make a very good point about him being easy on the eye and like, to watch is a foot, beautiful football to watch so Eden Hazard. Like, unbelievable no, technical not, player. Not but the, stat, the, the goals to gain, the stats, the golden boots from Mo That's Salah... Yeah, I think it's Mo. I think it'd be Mo. It's not just it's stats, though, is it? Is it, it is. What, uh, uh, to, to say that Mo Salah is just stats is disrespectful. It's harsh. No, he's it's a good footballer, but in comparison to Hazard, bro. Yeah, but, but that's not the point. The point is there are plenty of lovely footballers who played in the Premier League. It's not about that. It's literally about the fact that Mo Salah is in the greatest Premier League eleven ever and Eden Hazard isn't. Okay. And so if you're comparing the two, it's just the way it is. All right, let's keep the flow Salah, going. Salah edges it. Yeah, we'll keep this one maybe a little bit shorter because we've seen this debate a lot. Lampard versus Gerrard. Mm. We've done this debate on the show before as yeah. well, but we haven't heard you guys talk about it. So let's see. Easy. It's an obvious one. OK. We may as well not even have the whiteboards here and just go... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Is there any they're going to agree Hitting on? I think there are a couple we'll probably agree on. Um, Steven Gerrard is the greatest two-way Premier League player of all time. Frank Lampard was fantastic attacking-wise, and sure, I think he could put a tackle in at times, but Steven Gerrard was era-defining. There are players in every country at the very top level, Zizou, all the Barcelona squad, all the AC Milan team who say that Steven Gerrard was that player for them. He defined that position. Yeah, but we can, uh, I can find players that, that will say the I'm same I'm sure thing you can find, life. but I don't even need to find them. They're just standing there for me. It is a room full of people just saying that Steven Gerrard is era-defining for them. And even though he doesn't get the trophies, <coughs> here's the thing with the trophies. Everyone who won trophies wanted Steven Gerrard in their team. Mourinho, Ferguson, Real Madrid, all of the big teams at the time. Because he wanted... wasn't winning them. Lampard was winning them at Chelsea. Like, I think that side of his game was underestimated. Like, he was that player. And if you really look at him, go back into the stats, you'll see what he's done, man. All right. Okay. You're making a stats argument now. We'll, we'll move on to the next one. I've got a couple of current players now. Yeah. I've done a lot of legacy players. So let's look at uh, the Battle of the Argentinians. Enzo <laughs> against Alexis McAllister. Is there a theme with all of it? They're not going to agree on any of these. No, I think, I think he... I... Three, Let's two, have a look. reveal. You hesitated, though. Yeah, I did hesitate. hesitate. Why yeah. did you hesitate? I hesitated because Enzo is obviously one of the most expensive players ever in the Premier League. But actually, if you look at his Premier League appearances, if you look at what he's actually achieved in the Premier League, it's probably lower than what uh, McAllister's done in the Premier League. So at the very top level, if we're making the argument, McAllister and Enzo were both in that World Cup winning team. Enzo is a fantastic player, but if we're talking about long term, Max already ahead of him. Enzo was more important to that, that Argentina side when they won the World Cup. He came into an unsettled Chelsea side. McAllister came into a Liverpool side that was settled. And <laughs> in, in terms of, if you look at that team... The whole midfield had been ripped up. The whole it, midfield it was had, gone and we had at, the worst season ever. So who's more settled, Liverpool or Chelsea? Yeah, because before, McAllister's but, come in and settled. No, before, before they came in, who was more settled? We literally lost, like, no, our who captain. Was, who was more settled? That's not the argument. <laughs> no, but I'm asking you that question. Who okay. was more settled? Liverpool more settled, but the point... OK, was... then. That was all I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not sure it, it was. It <laughs> literally was. If you look at the Liverpool side, they were a more settled side. I'm not saying that you didn't get rid of midfielders and didn't bring them in, but when you look at the Van Dijk's that's still there, Allisons, we literally got rid of leaders. You, 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 you're now moulding a team around the Enzos and the Caicedos. There's a lot still going on at Chelsea. It's been difficult for, for there to be that consistency, but I think when you've seen Chelsea... At at best, Enzo is at his best. And I, I just think that he's a better player currently. You can make that same argument for McAllister as let's well. Let's keep going. Let's keep this the last going. one. Yeah, yeah, go on then. Uh, right, last one then. Let's have a look at who we've gone for. Conor Gallagher versus Dom. Mm. 
What's off this? Mm. I, two good players. Two good players are keeping it relevant to this squad. And actually, to be fair to both of them, they both took a little bit of time. Mm. So, so you both think this is a, this is a close one. Yeah, yeah. Remember, Connor. Remember it's a tricky one. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Dom, but actually I kind of agree with Gallagher. I back Dom in the long run, but I think Gallagher's an amazing player. I love him. I'd take him at Liverpool tomorrow. I love that. I'm just gonna agree. I think he's been incredible. I think he's now being appreciated for what he's done at Chelsea and now he's scoring goals. That's the thing that now edges it because before he was just the, the workhorse everyone was saying he doesn't stop running. I spoke to Petrovic a few weeks ago and he was saying he is that player that he's shocked that he's still going in the 89th, 90th minute. Okay. But now he's scoring goals. It's been incredible. Dropping a name drop always helps an argument. Yeah, when it you does. speak to a player, it always helps. You've got one more. We've one more. I've got to be fairly quick with this one, but we're doing the battle of the right backs. Oh, easy. We've done a lot. Rhys James versus Trent. Two top English young Will we fans. finally get agreement here? Will we get an agreement? Finally. Is, no. no, we've not. Clearly, it's Trent. Trent is uh, era defining and he is also position defining. Not only that, he can play multiple different positions. Serially disrespected, serially underrated. James isn't really in the team right now. At their best, I'm picking James. If I had a Champions League final tomorrow and I needed the, a right back to deal with a Vin Vinicius Jr. or an Mbappe, but to also do the attacking work, I'll put Reese James in that squad. Ooh, okay, it's good though. Who do you think came out on top there? <laughs> I don't know, very tight. I think oh, no. he sounded well to battle his case, given that Chelsea are kind of in the mud at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it's an uphill point. battle when your team is not doing well. Yeah. Players are there, though.